What's going on everybody and welcome back to Frankie's Aquatics right here on the wonderful platform that is YouTube. First and foremost, I hope you've had a very productive week. This week has been quite cool. I've been playing around with my YouTube things. I'm trying to change the kind of surroundings a little bit and the angles from where I'm coming from. So I'm kind of in a different position. Usually I'd be facing that way and you're relying on the light from the far wall, which is over there. Um, which when it's nice and bright, it's great. But during the winter, I hardly get any light at all. So I've decided to come back to this view. I haven't used this view and since I did my collaboration video with um, a gamer's wife, which is now renamed herself as A Girl Talks Fish, I believe. Go and check that out if you haven't done already. Bing, up here. Um, and yeah, so this window now that I'm currently at, there was a troublesome tree in my garden, which was blocking out most of the natural light. So that has since had to be removed because it had a terrible lean to it. So I've decided to make the most of the newfound light we've got coming through this little window and decided to set up in this sort of position. Don't quite know if I like it or not. I think I prefer it to the other one because I've got more light coming through. But uh, what do you guys think? Do you prefer this view or do you prefer the old view? So this week's video was actually voted for by you guys. So you may have noticed since I've hit the, the 1000 subscriber mark, it's unlocked a few new features on my channel. So I have a community tab now, which I didn't really know much about, to be honest. I have seen some of my favourite fish tubers using this community tab, but I wasn't quite sure how it worked. Um, and just when I was nearing a thousand subscribers, I had a quick Google about and found out that basically the community tab, it's almost like a news feed where you can ask people's opinions, you can do polls, you can upload videos, you can upload pictures, you can just kind of get, in, get involved with your audience. So I put this down to you guys. I thought, you know what, I'll see what the people want to see. And you guys voted for filtration, an in-depth conversation on what's the best way to filter an axolotl tank. Now, first and foremost, I want to clear something up. This is not a video that's going to help you how to cycle a tank. Believe me, I've tried so many times to do a video solely based on how to cycle an aquarium and how to do it correctly. Um, but it's such a boring topic. It really is. It's so boring. And I really can't make it fun. Um, I, I literally recorded about a 20 minute video um, a few months ago. And I was just like, wow. I was editing it because obviously I have to edit the videos together. I'd love this just to be one big take. But unfortunately, well not unfortunately, but you have to edit them together. And um, I was editing it together and it was so boring. And I'm a little bit, I like to critique my own work. And if I don't find it helpful or useful... Or, I mean, you're not meant to find yourself entertaining as such. But I don't find it, if I don't enjoy it myself, I don't think I should actually put that guy out into you guys. So my videos are very much scrutinised quite a lot. Um, and I do that to hopefully get better with each video, because it is just me doing this. I record my videos, I edit my videos, and then I release my videos and hope that you'll like them. Please, 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 please. Now, thankfully, you guys have talked to them really well, and you've enjoyed the content I've been producing. So hopefully this will be beneficial to axolotl keepers or aquatic keepers in general. There's various ways in order to cycle or filter, should I say, not cycle. I just said I'm not talking about cycling. I've just said it. So first things first, there is a few options that you have when it comes to filtering an aquarium. I didn't do the little walk off thing. No, I'm gonna say this again. So without further ado, let's get on with today's video. I'm a bit late now, aren't I? Me personally, I use sponge filters, which are basically powered. These are, this is a sponge filter. This is just an example. This is one that we'll be using my breeders rack upstairs. So this is one in particular, there's so many different designs you can get. And this is a, this is a, a double cylinder. You can get them single cylinders like that. You can get them where they're just one big block, which is the ones I prefer for axolotls, where you basically just got a bit of a weight on the bottom and sink to the bottom of your tank. Regardless to which design you decide to choose, they are powered simply by an air pump. And an air pump of a good size and of a good quality can power more than one tank at once. So this one air pump here, this is the uh, Tetra 400, I believe, is it? Oh no, sorry, it's the Tetra APS 100. It is the small and silent of the family, apparently. Um, it doesn't produce a lot of noise. I would show you, but I haven't got a socket available around me to show you. But take it from me, I used to use this from a Betis upstairs up until I upgraded just recently to the bigger pump, because obviously I've got a lot more tanks and things to contend with upstairs now. So this one pump here would probably do, you might get away with two. You might get away with two tanks, two axolotl tanks in particular, because obviously we're talking axolotls on this channel. So yeah, I reckon at a push, if you put a splitter on that, you'd probably get away with powering two. So straight away, you're cutting down two plugs just to the one plug, just by switching to sponge filters. Now I've recently used these, well, I've used them for quite a while now, but when I very first switched over to these, I was a little bit, 
mm, will they work? Will they serve the purpose? Because I didn't see, I didn't, couldn't quite understand how this particular design could do the job of my pre my previous internal filter. But believe me, take it from experience, these things work an absolute charm. They are great, they're very inexpensive, and they're not that bad to look at either. They're, they produce airflow and air circulation around your aquarium, because basically what happens is you attach your air pipe to the little nozzle there, or if you've got one of the big ones that stands in, they go in the top there, and then basically it will drag in the um, air through, which causes the filtration in the sponges, and it will kick air directly back out into the atmosphere, which, not, which creates a nice airflow and a, a nice air circulation at the same time of filtering the tank into your aquarium. So it kind of is two birds, one stone sort of, a, sort of a gig with these, and I do recommend them. Now these do come in various shapes and sizes, so don't be looking for particularly this design or this model. If you go onto eBay or any other site for that matter and just punch in air filters, you'll get a whole array of all different designs. I'll just show you some across here. There's so many, and as long as it's not so much about the design or how it looks, it's about the size and making sure you've got enough sponge to filter the aquarium that you've run in. So basically my large aquarium tanks, I use the large aquarium sponge filters. Um, not very expensive, a couple of quid a head. And these ones in particular is what I use in my breeders rack upstairs. Do I recommend these? Absolutely. Why? Cost effective. Um, two birds, one stone when regards to the filtration and the airflow. And I just think they're really, really beneficial. I think once people convert over to air filters from internal filters, there's no going back really. Cons, yes, there is some cons, believe it or not. So basically they won't do a great deal in regards to picking up all the poop and all the nasties that are in your tank. And it won't go out there and pick up any uneaten food. That's where you have to step in as a keeper with your little turkey vase, which I recommend in all my videos. And you have to go around taking out any poop and uneaten food as you see it. That's really the only gripe I've got with sponge filters. Not all filters pick up food and uneaten poop and all that. Uneaten poop? Ugh. Not all filters pick up uneaten food and poop anyway. So it's not really a, it's not really a deal breaker for me, but that is why I recommend and absolutely love air sponge filters. So what other options have you got? There's so many designs and models out there. Like I said, I'm not gonna pull them out directly and start bashing them or praising them. But if you're going for an internal filter, there's just a few things that you have to bear in mind when it comes to choosing the right sort of filter. Um, nine times out of 10 with filter, you get what you pay for. So if you're browsing around on Amazon or browsing around on eBay, and there's some Chinese knockoff air pump that promises to be silent, and you have to wait 20 years for it to be delivered, and it turns up and it's not all that silent, yeah, the chances are you're gonna pay for what you get. Go for a brand that you recognize. Go for a brand that you can relate to. So for example, Fluval or Tetra, or Marina, there's so many different ones out there. Um, these are reputable brands that have been around doing their thing for many, many years. And there's a reason they've been around for that long doing it, because they are reliable, or at least most of the time they're reliable. So always look for a good brand. Uh, secondly, make sure that you can either adjust the water flow, or there is some sort of option to kind of like turn it down, even if it means tampering with it slightly. Some people use like little bits of plastic to kind of slow down the, the filtration. Try and find one that's already got a switch on it. You don't want to mess around cutting pieces of plastic off and jamming it into the pump because you can obviously break the pump and you shouldn't really have to be doing that anyway. So obviously Axolotl's like peaceful, calm water. They don't want to be dragged around their aquarium when they're swimming about. So make sure you find something that's going to be nice and peaceful and it's going to match their needs. For you want to keep something that's not so noisy and you want to keep something that's not going to cause absolute mayhem inside of your aquarium. What happens if you've got more than one Axlotl Aquarium? You've got several tanks like me, then that is absolutely where your sponge filter will absolutely take over every other pro from every other filter. Now you think about it, let's say behind me I've got one, two, three, four, five, six tanks. Six tanks. Um, I'm filtering all of those tanks. Now how to do it the old school way and the way that I did it before, it would be with internal filters. So that would mean one filter, one plug. So each tank behind me would have one plug for its filter. So that's six plugs in total. Um, I pick up myself an air pump, um, preferably the bigger model if I'm honest, but just for example, pick up the air pump, put a splitter on this, which basically gives me more options for more pumps, for more pipes, sorry. And that can, this one plug, so you've gone from six to one, can filter your entire system. 
So how I started out with my air filters was um, obviously my collection kept growing over the years and the wife was absolutely nagging me because obviously I was stealing every little plug in the house. I was there with extension cords. I was just plugs everywhere. Couldn't keep up with it. And you can imagine the electricity bill wasn't exactly pr pretty either. Wasn't so sweet, shall we say. The electricity bill was not so sweet. Um, and then I had to kind of like look at ways to kind of like limit or at least reduce the plugs that I was using and the energy I was using within the house. Um, I did consider a big hamster wheel on the side of the house that the kids could run around on and produce naturally made electricity. But I think that's pretty much frowned upon and class as child labor. So I decided to switch over to sponge filters. And I'll be honest with you, I was very skeptical to begin with because I'd used internal canister filters for so many years. I got myself in a belief that, that was the only way of doing things. Um, I had seen a few pet stores and the odd YouTuber <laughs> and the odd YouTuber using sponge filters, but very little information was out there on how these things work. Now that's not suggesting or saying that other filters aren't going to work as well. And uh, I'm bashing any filters because uh, trust me, I've used so many different filters over the years and I am very much impressed with the, all the ones that I've used within reason. So here's my system. Uh, currently it is two axolotls at the bottom. There's another axolotl tank there, then it's a grow out tank there, community tank there, a fancy gold tank there. And this entire system right here is powered by one air pump. So one air pump and obviously six sponge filters actually filter and keep these tanks nicely happy and cycled. And that is done by this one pump that is hiding behind the greenery up here. So that one pump there, as you can see, the air pipes run off that, it goes into separate taps each tap goes into its own tank. Some some of the wires have got splitters on, as you can see, because obviously there's more, more obviously pipe needed. And then basically it runs down and it goes in to the tank like that. So that's a sponge filter. Some of you obviously gonna know what a sponge filter is, but some of you don't. So that is a sponge filter. That is powered by air, which is the air pipe which runs off there. Then if you follow the next one down, totally do boom, there's the next one. And then same again, toodly do and a big old boom down there as well. And there's Pixel. And then over the opposite side, it runs down the back. If you can see, try not to focus. And then it feeds directly back in again. So one there, um, over here to the fancy gold, one there. And then over here to the males, there's a big one at the back there. So it's just really that's my foot. <laughs> So basically, that one pump is obviously powering that whole rack system, which is pretty damn impressive. I'm confident that if, obviously it's not, but if this was even more and contained even more tanks, let's say I wiped all of that off the top and I put a massive tank or even two tanks on top of there, which I'm, I'm within my weight limit to do in regard to the rack and how much weight it can hold, I am more than confident that that one pump could power all of those tanks quite comfortably and very, very easily. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about cost effective. So that one air pump there does this whole system. And the same applies to the upstairs system. So you've probably seen this in previous videos anyway. But this is my breeder's rack, which goes that big all the way. Whoop! <laughs> and then obviously this is the bit that's, um, this is the breeder's system over here. So this is the part that is gonna be filtered. So there's only one filter at the moment working which currently has this little monkey in there who um, is ready for his fair own, but I'm not quite ready to let the little guy go, if I'm honest. I'm not advertising him very well. So that's the um, filter in the back there. That's the same one I was showing you on the video earlier. And again, this is all powered by sponge filters, which are just there. That's the sponge filter. It feeds out of the back here and it leads to the pump, which is hanging up behind there, which you probably remember being all kinky in the last video. So there we go, that's how it works. Nice and simple, very cost effective, and I can't sing its praises enough. I just figured while I was here, I'd show off my uh, goldies. So these are golden albinos, as you probably know them already. And that over there is Marcel. These are from Cambridgeshire Axolotls. And this little one over here, hello little one, that's lovely. Really fluffy gills now, they're really filling out beautifully. Absolutely lovely. You want to come over and say hello? You want to come and say hello? So adorable. <laughs> Absolutely adorable. Let's have a look. Let's turn this camera.
camera. There we go. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. As you can see, they're growing out beautifully. Can you see Tia in the background? Look. You talking about me? You talking about me? <laughs> no, Tia, I'm not talking about you. Tia, get down. Get down, doggy. We also have some seriously funky babies in here. I'm trying to get it so the reflection's not kind of disorientating the image. So they're completely off sand now, I did it this morning, got the last little bit of sand out of there this morning. We can see them, there we go. It's a lot easier to keep clean that way you see. Look at the little monkeys, I love them. Little monkeys everywhere. How much trouble can these little guys be, eh? I absolutely adore them. <laughs> Hello, little one. Every so often you'll just catch one like this that just stares at you, wondering what is going on. So adorable. Mwah. <laughs> So that is really basically a real short rundown on how these tanks are obviously maintained at the moment. Um, I will happily do a tank on a video on tank cycling if it's something that people want to see. I have got it in a guide. When people ask for advice in regards to axolotl care, I give them a care guide and it's recently been updated on the basics of how to cycle a tank. Because there's so many misguided information out there. Pet stores give wrong information. Online is very contradicting. Um, it can be very tricky. It's not complicated. It really isn't complicated. It's just being made to feel complicated by the so many different results that you get when you search how to cycle a tank. If it is something you want to see, I will do it in a video for me. That is something that people would like to see. Some viewers obviously know about tank cycling. It won't be that massive interest to them. So ideally, I will probably do it as a bonus video one week. So rather than just having the one video coming out on the Monday, I'll probably do a Monday and then a Tuesday video, like a bonus one. But let me know if that's something that you guys are interested in because I don't want to just do it if you guys are like, I'm not really interested in any of that, but thanks all the shame. And that's pretty much it. It sums up this week's video. I do hope you've enjoyed the different angle this week. I know I mentioned at the beginning of the video, but it has let a lot more natural light through. And it isn't that bright here today, just despite what the mirror will tell you. There's a little mirror there. There's a boom in the lighting from that side, but trust me, it's not that bright today. It's having its moments, but it's not overly impressive out there. Looks a little bit windy, a little bit cold, if I'm completely honest. Have a look in the community tab. There will be another vote on next week's video. I hope you guys get involved with that too. Thank you, as always, for your continued support. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button and ding the notification bell and all that jam. And until next time, ta-ta for now. Oh, hello. Didn't see you there.